Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between cis and trans isomers and ENZ notation. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about these two definitions, which we've actually used before, but again, you never know. So stereoisomers and geometric isomers. What is a stereoisomer? It is a special case of a molecule when the atoms are joined together in the same order. So if you're looking at two different molecules, they have the same order of atoms, but they have a different spatial arrangement, okay? Specifically, what we're looking at today, though, is a subset of those which we call geometric isomers. Now, a geometric isomer occurs when there is an area that is restricted and doesn't allow the molecule to rotate around, okay? So what we're used to seeing, though, that is we're used to seeing that in the case of double bonds because double bonds restrict rotation. In case you're wondering why single bonds don't restrict rotation, let's say that we had a molecule that looks like this, okay? So I have two carbons and then I have, you know, a bunch of hydrogens, but who cares about those hydrogens? Uh, I have two chlorine atoms though, which is gonna make this different, okay? So if I were to make a 3D model of this out of molecular modeling kit pieces, it would look something like this. Remember, chlorine is a bigger atom, and so these green guys right here, those are supposed to be the chlorines. So notice that there is a single bond. So if I were to make this molecule, I could technically rotate this molecule around this single bond. If I did that, what would that look like? It would look something like this. So if I rotated the single bond, I could end up with the chlorines facing the same direction. Now, are these isomers? Okay, are they? The answer? No, they are not, okay? In order to have a geometric isomer, you need to have a restriction, which means that you have to have a double bond that would be restricting the movement of the rotation. So again, if I had this as a single bond, this entire thing could rotate and I could get this. They are the exact same structure though. So now what we really care about are those alkenes. So if I asked you to draw on a piece of paper, 1,2-dichloroethene, notice again, it ends in ene, it's an alkene, then how would you draw it? And I do this in class all the time, and half the kids will draw it this way, and half the kids will draw it this way, okay? And so again, normally these would be up here, but it doesn't matter because technically that's the same structure, okay? But are these two things the same structure? The answer, definitely not, okay? They are isomers, they're geometric isomers. Why? I have a double bond. If I made this out of molecular modeling kit pieces, this would not allow me to rotate this around. So I could never get these two chlorines on the same side by rotating this around. On the other hand, I could never get this to move onto this side because this double bond is restricting it. So again, notice I have two chlorines on opposite sides I have two chlorines on the same side. That's a really big difference. So what do we call this when you know your uh, functional groups are on opposite ends or when your branches are on opposite ends? We call that a trans isomer. So trans 1,2-dichloroethene would be the technical name of this structure. And what if they're on the same side? That would be cis 1,2-dichloroethene, okay? So trans and cis are referring to the placement of where your functional groups or branches are. Cis means on the same side, trans means on the opposite side, okay? So for example, think about this. We could name both of these structures and we'd end up with the exact same name, but because they're geometric isomers, we have to add cis or trans to them, okay? So let's see if we can name this on our own anyway. I have a five carbon long chain there's a double bond at carbon two, so this is already gonna be called two pentene. But look at where these branches occur. These are on the same side, these are on opposite sides. So technically the one on the left would be cis two pentene, and the one on the right would be trans two pentene, okay? So keep that in mind. Whenever you see something that has a branched alkene related to it, you're probably gonna have to add the word cis or trans in front of it in order for us to correctly identify or draw that system. All right, so why do we even have another system called easy notation? Think about this. Some molecules are probably gonna be really hard to name with the cis-trans system. For example, what if I gave you something like this and I asked you this question, which of these structures is cis and which of them is trans, okay? Now look at those. I've got bromine, I've got fluorine, okay, but I also have chlorine and I have hydrogen. How would I figure out which ones are on opposite sides and which ones are on the same side? 
So in reality, it's extremely difficult and impossible to use the cistern system. So luckily, there's EZ notation, which was created to make these more complicated cases a little bit easier to understand. So what exactly are the steps? So the first thing you do when you're trying to figure out if it's an E or a Z system is you look at what is attached directly to the double bond and you assign it priorities based on an arbitrary set of rules that I'm going to tell you next. Okay, so you basically look at what's attached to the double bond. And so when we say that, again, we're looking at, you know, this side versus the same side. All right, so if there is a higher priority group and they are on opposite sides, then we term that an E isomer. Okay, that's what E stands for, opposite. Now the Z would happen if the higher priority groups are on the same side, okay? So again, you can kind of think about E as being, since they're opposite, kind of like the trans version, and you can think of Z as kind of being the cis version, but again, we have a new list of rules or priorities that we're gonna use to figure this out. So what do they look like, okay? Priority rules, first thing. Atoms with a higher atomic number are given higher priority. Next. Hydrogens are basically negligible. You never really deal with hydrogens unless it's something special like an isotope of hydrogen like deuterium or tritium or something like that. What if they're branches? Well, if they're chains, you compare the atoms until, they're a, until a difference in atomic number arises. Once there's a difference, you stop because then you have your answer to which one has the higher priority. And last but not least, if a double bonded atom appears, then technically that counts as twice. So you double the atomic number. Let's talk about what that would look like then, all right? So think about this, bromine and chlorine are way heavier. Bromine is heavier, chlorine is a little, is obviously lighter, but still these are the two heaviest atoms, okay? This would be our Z isomer because again, they are on the same side. This would be our E isomer because bromine and chlorine are the heaviest things and they are on opposite sides, okay? Now let's look at this case, okay? Again, notice I have chlorine on opposite sides, I have chlorine on the same side. Again, if I didn't know about you know, E and Z notation, I could name this, okay? That's carbon one, that's carbon two, that would be one, two, dichloroethene but I have to add E or Z because again, priority rules. So this would be called E, yes, you have to include the parentheses and the hyphen, 1,2-dichloroethene, whereas these are on the same side, that would be Z1,2-dichloroethene instead. All right, what about a more complicated case? These have, again, now branches to them. So if I were doing that, what would I do? Okay, this would be Z2-butene because again, if you think about it, these are on, again, the same side. This would be E2-butene because they're on opposite sides. But again, if I were to give you that, you could figure out that this is just 2-butene. Okay, makes perfect sense. That's 2-butene. That's also 2-butene, but they're very different from one another because technically this has the priority on the same side. These priorities are on opposite ends. Okay, what if it looks way more complicated than that? I have to use the priority rules. So let's look at what's attached directly to these carbons, okay? So these are directly attached, no difference. I just have carbons surrounded by hydrogens and hydrogens are negligible. The blue ones though, those are now different, okay? That's a carbon, okay? This has nothing attached to it. And these are both oxygens. Notice though, this is a double bonded oxygen, so it counts as double. So in reality, if I had to choose between E or Z to represent the name of this compound, this would be technically which one? What do you think? Answer, it is a Z isomer. Why is it a Z isomer? Think about it, okay? These two guys are on the highest priority side. Even though this has an oxygen attached, this counts as double, okay? And so technically the things that are on this side have more priority than the things that are on this side. Think about it again. This has an oxygen, all right, but this has nothing else on this side. It was just a carbon. The hydrogens were negligible, okay? And so I hope that at least gives you an idea about how E and Z notation works and also how cis and trans isomers are used. If you have any questions, please ask.